Hello, pre-algebra, Mr. Lawrence here with a very hoarse voice. I'll do the best I can to muddle through this. Hopefully you can hear me okay and it doesn't give out totally. All right, I know some of you are weak on your graphs, like bar graphs, histograms, etc., etc. The whole key in those is deciding, you know, what kind of data you have, and the data will tell you what kind of graph you should make. So we're going to go through. I've got several different examples. We'll go through them. All right, the first one, example number one is we took a survey of kids' favorite flavors of ice cream cones and we surveyed 10 kids and we came up three voted for chocolate five for vanilla and two for strawberry what's the best type of graph for this well the best type of graph here would be a bar graph why because there's only one variable and we're just counting the quantity of it and when I make my bar graph it might look something like this okay and along the side I'm gonna have the frequency meaning the number of times it showed up frequency okay and it doesn't look like anybody's shown up more than five so I might go you know two four and then six and I space them out evenly and down here I have the favorite flavors and that's gonna be what chocolate vanilla and strawberry and then I make my bars the chocolate bar it's going to have to go up to three, like that. The vanilla bar will go all the way up to five. Should be about the same width because the width of the bar isn't showing anything. And then the strawberry bar will go up to two. Now, what some people do is they might like shade, you know, some of the bars differently. Maybe one blank, etc. It's not required. Please, on your answer document, do not use any color on the OAA. Okay, so that is a bar graph. If you were taking a survey of how many kids wanted to major in math, language, arts, social studies, or science when they went to college, that would be bar graph because it's only one variable, the flavor of ice cream. And we're just counting how many times that variable shows up. The next one is percent scores on a test. And again, it's, it's like one variable, but notice the data is presented in a range. If you have one variable presented in a range, this is a histogram. Oops, it doesn't look like I'm in writing mode. This is when you use a histogram. A histogram is for when um, the one variable is presented in a range. Now, if I was talking about letter grades where I just had like number of A's, number of B's, number of C's, I wouldn't use a histogram. I'd use a bar graph. But with a histogram, because I'm going 70 to 79, there's a range of scores, then I'm going to go ahead and use the histogram, which looks kind of like the bar graph. Now I'm going to do the uh, uh, 70 to 79 will be here and then I'll have 80 to 89 and then 90 to 99. Okay and uh, let's see this is always 0, 0. Okay um, and all these other ones are going to show up as 0, all the other ranges so you won't see any bars there and it looks like a 10 so I'm going to go 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 alright and again the frequency this is the frequency meaning how many times each range or yeah each range or how many members each range had okay sorry it's a little tricky writing that way and these are my range of scores down here range of scores now on the OA Thursday you'll have plenty of time you can put all these other ones in 60 to 69 50 to 59 right 40 to 49 right or you can always do that little thing there too okay so with the histogram here's how this works my first one shows up in the 70 to 79 range and there are five of them so from here I'm gonna go up to five and then over to there now the uh, 80 to 89 goes up to 10 I'm gonna use part of the wall of the first bar and take it over like that they're the same width or at least they're supposed to be just about the same width and notice the bars are touching on the 90 99 goes three so it's gonna go something like that I guess I should make that a little bit larger. And again, you could 
stripe it if you want and stripe that one a different way if you want to make it stand out but that's a histogram it's just like a bar graph except the one variable is occurring in ranges okay so uh, let's see here let's take a look at this blue one the percent of time spent during each day we pulled some kids and we got the percent of time they did everything well, I see 33% of the time they were sleeping. That'd be about eight hours a day. 25% they were in school, typical school day. 12% on homework, 12% on video or computer games, 12% exercising, and 6% of the time they were eating. Okay, when you see percentages presented like this, this is going to be a great time for a circle graph. And so I'll draw my circle. And it's important that your circle graph be divided up appropriately. Like for example, I know that 25% is school. So I might start with the 25% because I think that would be the easiest. 25% right there. And I might do something like school. I got plenty of room. There's 25% of the day. Okay. I know a third of the day is sleeping. Well, a third a day might look like just about that, and that'll be sleeping. Okay, so that's sleeping. Now, uh, I need a couple 12%, right? Do I have those totaling 100, or did I make a silly mistake? Let me see something here. 2, 4, 6. 6 and 6 is 12, right? I feel like I have a small error there. Hold on one second. Okay, I think they do add up to 100, so I'm good. Now I need 12% for homework, video, computer games, and exercising. And those are all going to be about the same. Well, I know that uh, a quarter is 25%, so half of that would be 12 and a half, so it's going to be just a, oops, it's going to be a little bit less than a quarter of a, um, I'm sorry. Uh, it'll be a little less than half a quarter. So that would be half a quarter. It's actually going to need to do something kind of like this. Okay. And then when I do it, I'm going to try to do them all the, uh, the same size. Okay. And so that little sliver there at the end is going to be the eating, right? This will be eating. Uh, this could be computer games. Right? So now I'm breaking them up into uh, approximately equal sizes. What do I have? Homework and then uh, exercising. Okay? So that's a circle graph when you see percents. And remember the, pers the wedge of the circle, the part of the circle that you're talking about has to take up the same percent or pretty darn close to it that you're making by hand. There might be some human error, but it has to take up the same percentage as presented. So if school is 25%, I take up a quarter of the circle. Sleeping is 33%, that's just about a third. I'm taking up a third of the circle. Okay, let's look at this green one over here. Well, let's see here. Here is Bob's weight. I should say Bob's. Oop, highlighter's not going to help me. Bob's weight over the past four years. All right. At age 10, he weighed uh, 60 pounds. At 11, he's 70 pounds. At age 12, he's 85 pounds. And 13 is at 105 pounds. Okay. Uh, on this one, because time is being involved, I'm going to use a, uh, a line graph or a scatter plot of some type. So, you know, I'll make little axes here, and I'll have his uh, weight, and down here will be his age, okay? Now, this is at 0, 0, but I'm going to start at 10, okay? And then we have here 11, 12, and 13 years old, age in years I should say. Okay, and this is the weight and that's in pounds. LBS is a symbol for pounds. And 
you know, only going up to 105, I could go all the way up, or I could do something like that and say start at, I don't know, maybe 50 pounds, 160, 70, 80, 90, 100, and then like a 110 and make my line go up a little farther. All right. So I think a line graph, because I'm showing change over time. So 1060, 10 to 60, 11 to 70. Looks like 13 is at 105. And then 12 is only at 85. So right about there. And so then I could do something like this. And that would be a line graph. Line graphs show change over time. Okay, I probably wouldn't do a scatter plot there because I'm not using it to predict anything. All right, here's uh, one with uh, the past three years, the number of wins for Ohio State and that team up north. Okay, and on this one, I might do a stem and leaf plot, or actually, I was thinking a double bar graph. I think I'm going to go double bar graph on this. So. I might have the years, right, the seasons, oops, those didn't separate, let me lower that, years, and then a number of wins, okay, and maybe this time I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, ooh, that's not looking very good, it's not going to show up very well, so... What I'll do is I'll do that little trick again. I'll go like this. And let me see, the smallest number of wins is 4. And then I'll have to go 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. All right, and the years are what? 2009. 2010 and 2011, and I probably should have spread those out better. So let me rewrite them. Stuff a little room here. So we got 2009, 2010, and 2011. Now I'll do like this for Ohio State in 2009. They had 11 wins. So I'll have a bar going all the way up to 11. And then they had the year after 12 wins. Oh, I guess I should make that go up to 12 there. My mistake. I'll have to fix that really quick. It won't take long. Go up to 12. And then, of course, I would do six wins in 2011. Okay, like that. All right, now I have to do the team up north, and the team up north wins are 4, 5, and 11. So I would do that, and then that, and then up to 11 like that. Okay? Um, so that's a double bar graph where the red bars represent Ohio State's wins, and the blue bars represent Michigan's wins. All right, that's the lesson for today. Remember, there will be one more video tomorrow. Hope you guys get lots of rest tonight. Do well on your language arts portion of the OAA. And then Thursday, we'll do the math and Friday, the science. Mr. Lawrence, signing off. Good night, everyone.